Hi, this is Karen Lodgebaugh. I'm a professor of rangeland ecology and I'm also a member of the Range Science Education Council. And as you probably know, there are many rangeland careers out there. You can work for local conservation districts, nonprofit conservation groups, ranches or ranchers, or also for the state and federal government. If you want to work for a federal agency such as the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or even the Bureau of Reclamation, you have to meet specific standards which are outlined in the Office of Personnel Management. I'm going to tell you about those guidelines and right now even if you don't think you want to work for a federal agency I think it's worth making sure that when you get through your degree you have all the qualifications that would, would qualify you on this federal series just in case you get into a place and you need to work for the Forest Service or there's a great job with NRCS. So keep this in your back pocket. Give me 30 seconds. I'll show you how to take your classes and see if they align with the federal series from the Office of Personnel Management. Okay, now I'm going to show my screen and you can see that I'm on a website and it starts here. I'm with the Office of Personnel Management, opm.gov and I've gone and I've looked for occupational series and it sent me to this whole list of classifications and qualifications. Anything you do with the federal government, whether you're a human resource a specialist or you work in education, you have to qualify on what I call the federal series. All the range jobs and, and uh, natural resource jobs are in the biology series. So you go to biology science, that's the 400 series, and you'll see if you want to become an, an ecologist with an agency. You could click here and find out what it takes to be qualified as an ecologist. Botany is another one. Many range students get really close to qualifying on the botany series and there, if, therefore if they want to work as a botanist for a forest or for the Bureau of Land Management, they could. Okay, now I'm going to focus on the rangeland management series, 0454 or the 454 series as we call it. Here are the requirements. You need to have 18 credits in range management, 15 in directly related plants, soils, and animal science and then another nine credits in a resource management studies. So that's kind of hard to know exactly what that is. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet that the Range Science Education Council developed thanks to Dr. Mitch McLaren and uh, here's that focused series. So now you should see something that says Range Management Specialists. That's the GS 454 and here's the information I basically told you about where you would go on the OPM website to find this series. Here's those three sets of classes, range management, plant, animal, soil, and then resource related. Now when you apply for a job and you send in your resume, an HR, human resources specialist, is going to look at this and they're going to try to look at your transcripts and see if you have the right number of semester credit hours in these three areas. That can be pretty difficult. A lot of times classes these days are really a range plant class, but they're called wildland plants. And so someone working as an HR specialist trying to see if you're qualified as a range management specialist may or may not recognize that. So what Dr. McLaren did is he said, why don't you just put your classes that you've actually had in this template and when you submit your application, you'll submit this. You're going to tell the HR specialist which classes you had in each of these areas. And remember, when you, you need 18 credits in range management, but you need credits in each of these areas, principles, plants, ecology, inventory, improvements or restoration, uh, land planning, and you have to have 18 credits but you need credits in each of those areas. The same with in the next section, the plant, animal, and soil science areas, you need 15 total credits but you need some in plant science, some in animal science, and some in soil science. So to qualify on the 454 series, you need some credits in each of those areas. Uh, and then finally, this resource management courses. You need to help the HR specialist understand what classes on your transcripts helped you learn about wildlife management, watershed, natural resource economics or ag economics, forestry, agronomy, forages, recreation. Sometimes the HR specialist will look and they'll give you a little bit of freedom and they'll, they might count something one way. Another HR specialist might sit down and wouldn't count it at all. So the best bet is to make sure that your classes are clearly fitting in these categories. I'm going to give you an example from the University of Idaho. Ours is actually fairly simple. Our classes largely are named range land. That helps the HR specialist know that it was a range class. So in the principles, our students would put that they, they had the range land principle class and it was three credits. And here is the catalog description. Range plants, we have two classes, wildland plant ID and wildland plant field studies. Both of these are REM or range classes. So again, that helps the HR specialist know what it is and the, and the description is right there for them. And then next is rangeland ecology. Very simple, it fits in the range ecology section. 
vegetation monitoring and measurements because it's an REM class, the range specialist or the human resource specialist would probably know it's in the range area, but I've also included the actual description here. And integrated field studies in rangelands, it's clear it's a range class and there's the description. Uh, that restoration, here's one that is a plant science class, but it's a plant community restoration class. And so that the HR specialist knows it's a range class, I've included the chop cropped the class description out of the catalog and it's clear this is about restoration so you've got to help this person this person the HR specialist may not have any clue how to uh, cal calibrate a sprayer or why you'd need to do that in restoration so you need to keep that description there so that they have it and then finally integrated rangeland management fairly straightforward if you're at another class your your um, integrated class might be called integrated natural resource management you need to help the HR specialist know that it will be relevant to rangelands I've had people say that another thing to do is make sure you keep the syllabus of these classes. On the classes that it's not really clear, you might want to include the syllabus and say, see, I really did, did study rangelands. So um, make it easy for the HR specialist to understand what you took and why it relates to these 18 credits. In our degree, we actually get 19 credits of range. Then the next area, we've got some plant science classes all of our students take. We have at least one animal science class that everybody takes because you have to show the HR specialist that you know something about animals, in this case animal husbandry for us. Soils is the same. Showing this, the um, HR specialist that these are soils classes that you took to help meet those 15 credits in these three areas. Remember, you can't have all 15 credits in one area, you have to have some in each. In this bottom section, you need nine credits total, and they can occur in any of these areas. You could have all nine credits in wildlife, some in watersheds, forestry, what, whatever. Here's another case where um, this is a forestry class, Introduction to Spatial Analysis and Management. It's not really a management. It, they don't really teach you how to manage resources. So many of our students take Introduction to Forest Management because that's definitely a forestry class. It definitely talks about management, so that would count towards the nine credits. So again, your job is to make it easy for the HR specialist and uh, make sure you've got the, the descriptions there, what categories they fit in, make sure that you meet all of those credit requirements, keep your syllabus because you might need it, and then the other thing you can do is uh, if one of your professors can include a letter that says, yes, I've looked at this and it is true, these classes are as the person, as the student said, and they should meet the 454 series standards. So. That's Karen's advice. It's just through years of working with uh, range uh, specialists out in the field and with HR specialists, that's some advice. Make it easy for the HR specialist to know that you meet those requirements. When you get this, this little matrix done, include it in USA Jobs with your um, transcripts. So that's all I have for you today. I hope it was helpful.